Hello everyone, welcome back to Reflections. Today we're gonna do a non-normal reflection. I am here with my new friend, Ben, and he is eventually going to be having his own show here at Drash Ministries, which I am super excited about. So I just wanted to introduce him. We don't have a name for the show yet, or we don't know what time it's going to be or what day, but we will definitely let you know as soon as we do. Um, but I just wanted to introduce you to Ben and have him chat a little bit about what is on his mind and uh, what his uh, show is really going to start to be all about. So Ben, we talked a little bit about it uh, before we started recording about how um, you were going to focus on culture and, and how you want to approach that and really you know, how we're kind of tied up too much in culture. And I guess just expand on that a little bit and tell everybody really where you want to go with it. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> I think we had, you know, you kind of open up a, uh, a can of worms, right? right? And you're like, okay, what what is it that I want to put before a people that I don't know? What is it that I want to share with the world? Okay. And um, it's it's a lot different than preaching or prepping a sermon or taking a church on a mission or a vision uh, or developing a ministry or point of impact. Uh, when you have an empty table and um, and, and essentially a room that that is global, right? Mm -hmm. right. So you're, okay, what, what is it that God is inspiring me to bring to the table? Right. And one of the, I think, one of the paradigms that we're living in right now is the dismantling of c culture and uh, all of these catchy phrases like um, new normal. Yeah. Right? That's terrifying. I and like the love is love. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, right? and there's some <laughs> universal, like we can, we, and <clears throat> it was very interesting actually today. I was working with my daughter. And, um, you know, we're home on this remote journey of education and we're a split house right now. We have some kids that are homeschooled and we have uh, like my daughter that's in seventh grade and she has a, an English lit book and it's very well written. It's so well written um, and it's about the journey of this little girl through her experience of slavery. Mm. And uh, but it's so well written that it's actually too graphic for my daughter. Now, not too graphic because the story shouldn't be heard. Right. But it's too graphic because our schools have lost the the line of that, you know, some children should be innocent still. Right, right. And the story should be told, but it's, there's a line of innocence that's been crossed. And and I was sharing with, with my wife that, you know, our they assume so many kids have been desensitized to atrocities mm -hmm. right. that they're just willing to put very well written literature in front of 12 year old minds thinking that they can process adult atrocities. Right. And that's not okay. No, or no. But right. in the same hand, I can't, it's not about naivety and it's not about blocking out uh, the value of learning, but I'm just. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I want to be able to put my feet down and say, no, what are we stand for? What, what is it that, that is bigger than just saying, hey, are you going to church on Sunday? Are you, uh, are you a card carrying member of an organization? Um, and you vote blue or you vote red. Uh, we are this, we are a culture that is radically owned by identifying ourselves into groups. Mm-hmm. And that is not the gospel. Mm, right. It was Jesus came in every matter of speaking to dismantle groups. Right. Right. He challenged group thinking because group thinking enabled people to say they belong to something without ever having to change. Right. Yeah. And we're now stuck inside this machine and we're individually cogs fighting for identity by what groups we belong to. Right. And then is my group failing? Is the people group that I stand with, are they succeeding? Are we waving banners and flags that affiliate me with something that's trending? And, yep. and we become so value-less uh, and we're so um, 
we become so pragmatic in cause that we're like, if you're not with my cause, you're no good. Yeah, this is so, it's so funny that you're talking about this. I literally listened to a sermon on the way here today about us knowing our value in Christ and truly knowing what love is mm-hmm. and how he loves us and how we, because of culture, um, we've just become like an actor and we put on this face for this group and this face for this person and this face for this job. Mm-hmm. And, and then we completely lose who we actually are because we're like 10 different people and 10 different groups and things. Yeah. And then and then we're empty because <laughs> we don't know who we are in Christ and we don't feel loved. And that's why we seek love in all these other areas, right? And how many clicks we get and how many posts and comments and all those kinds mm-hmm. of things. And it's exactly that. It's culture where it's funny because in culture, not not all parts of it are bad things. They can be good things. But it's when they become that worshipped idol, right, that then they're, that's when they become, you know, the deceiving, horrible idol that we're worshipping. Yeah, I think we as a people, we serve a lot of gods. Yep. And, um, you know, this is like a, it's, it's one of these components that you, you don't want to, to present yourself as just a counterculture. I'm a, right. I'm a, I want to be a destroyer of what we see so that we can have this utopic view. Um, we, have to, we have to be able to speak the truth without being viewed um, a hater. We want to be accepted. <laughs> well, let, me, let me put it this way. I am confident at this juncture, I cannot speak the truth without being hated. Right. Yeah. And knowing that, um, I think that was that was half the battle of wanting to cross the threshold today was saying if I commit to being a purveyor of the truth, not looking for likes, not looking for acceptance, not looking, but purely on behalf of the hearer, mm-hmm. because so many people have questions, so many people are alone, and mm-hmm. so many people are going to need the security of doing this privately because they don't have the courage to do it publicly. Right. Right. And our faith is designed to be a public faith. Yes. Um, The God we serve, the only God, the living God, is designed to be known. But I feel like we're actually being in the midst of all, like I've never been so disappointed in the church. And I have to be so careful because I don't want to disregard the bride. It's not my job to be the judge of the bride. Right. But I am so concerned over the integrity of the bride mm-hmm. and over the gatekeepers whose blood the the people's um, blood is on their hands. And I'm like, what are the pastors of this present day? What are they fighting for, standing for, and what are they willing to die for? Yeah. And I, I am not... Um, I, I've come into a season of life where I, I realize I just want I want to honor my king and I want to put before people the truth so that the, the presence of God, whether they deny him, um, whether they've whether they they say they follow him, mm-hmm. um, I, I, there's so many unique and awesome people and there's so many unbelievers that I love and call friends, and there's so many people that yeah. I don't walk in judgment of, of how they believe or what their faith is, and it isn't my job at this juncture um, to berate the groups that I see mm-hmm. forming. But it is my job to stand as a loving dissident against the normal that is tearing away the glory and the righteousness and the beauty of the God I love. Yeah. And so I just, I feel like somehow there has to be a platform established Mm -hmm. where the simple word, the grace, the love, the beauty of God is shared, but equally the radical truth that he is vengeful and he's possessive and he like, He's jealous for his kids. Yeah. And I want I want all people to know the love of God in that way. Like I want them to know that he is 
He's willing to fight for them and die for them and give them authority and power and jurisdiction over um, situations, circumstances to gain influence, not for their power, but for his glory. Yeah. Like there is so much to be done and, and everybody's trying to do it through the ways of men. And I guess I just want to sit in a seat and trust the way of God. Yeah. I want to speak his word. I want to share his truth and believe that the word will not return void. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. It's awesome. You are so right. Guys, we, I mean, we live in culture. The world is culture, right? And we have to live in that. We can't hide from it. We can't separate from it, like you said. We have to rise above it in our truth that is God's word and, and God and his love. And if we can if we can do that and exercise that then and show other people how to do that i mean this this whole platform that you're watching this is culture you know like facebook and all this stuff this is culture and we can take some of culture and some of the world and use it for god right we can take what the enemy meant to destroy relationship and intimacy and talking with people like the internet and we could say no we're going to we're going to use this for god and we're going to flood your internet with God. So I super love this whole idea of starting a channel and talking about culture and showing people how we can be in it, but we can make it all about God. That is so awesome. I'm so excited. So thank you guys for uh, checking in. Uh, tune in very soon to see exactly uh, what time and when and where Ben will be scheduled. Um, Thank you for explaining to everybody. Thank you. We cannot wait to come back and do a next one, guys. So we love you and God loves you. Have a great week.